This is Scott the Fix-It Guy, here to tell you about how I solved my problem with my 2010 hybrid battery. had 164,000 miles on it, and the battery stopped working. I started getting the triangle of death on the dashboard, and the car would shift into limp mode where it didn't have very much power. And this is an indication that the traction battery or the hybrid battery is having some problems it may be time to replace it. So I got this little uh, OBD2 Wi-Fi from Amazon. You can plug it into your car and it will give you some information on how your battery is doing. It will give you voltage and how each one of the modules is, is doing. And I came to find out that a couple of the modules were having a lot of trouble and it was time for some type of a replacement the battery would um, discharge pretty fast and then it wouldn't charge back up. So sign that some of the cells or some of the modules were just getting um, depleted and, and it's time for a replacement. You may also get a uh, code, the P0A80 code, which indicates that it's time for a replacement. These are some individual cells or modules you can buy from eBay and they're always used and I tried that. I bought six of them, put them in about $250 worth and it didn't do the trick because you have to have the cells or modules all perfectly balanced and there's no way to really do that correctly. You can also for $19.49 through Green Bean company you can get a five-year warranty on a remanufactured battery and that also includes installation so pretty good deal I decided to go to the dealership and get a brand new battery for $24.57 but um, that was me doing all the labor I think if you pay the dealership they want about $400 for the labor to put in the new battery you also have to give them back the old core. The core charge at the dealership, I think, is thirteen hundred dollars. But if you give them your old battery, there's no there's no core charge. This is Scott the Fix It Guy. I'm going to be replacing my hybrid battery, and to do that, just gotta do a couple of quick disassemblies. This stuff comes out pretty fast. Let's lift these things up. Twist these to unlock them. Lift this up. That up. And lift this straight out. These come out. Pretty quick and modular. This is the hybrid battery's safety plug. It's kind of like a breaker. When you remove it, then the chance of getting hurt by a lot of electricity goes way down. So we're going to pull it this way first, then pull it out, and then that breaks a circuit between the uh, battery so the chance of getting shocked again goes way down so it's very important to remove this before you do any other work with the battery you want to move the seats down <coughs> lift these out and then this this will come out but there's a bolt right here that has already been removed but you can lift these up these parts all right and already disconnected this part this part 
disconnected this one from here. And we have to take out a couple of bolts that are holding the battery in. So we have a 12 millimeter here and here, a couple on the other side, and we're going to need to remove some 10 millimeters too. Just doing these 12s now. There's one right here. This kind of pivots. You can get this out of the way. We decided to get a new battery pack from the dealership rather than getting a reconditioned one uh, just to get a little more longevity. So it's about $2,500 for the new battery pack. I'll be doing a, a video on how to switch it out. But basically, you're getting the battery pack minus the fan assembly and minus the ECU controller. So you're really just getting the frame and the battery. So we'll be showing how that how all that works. So you got these 12 millimeters. We're going to take a couple on the back side here out too. Okay, so we've got the seat forward. And there's one of those 12s right there. It's actually going to be one and then another one here too. And these are coming out pretty easy because I had this out not too long ago. But when you get them, get it from the first time, the factory has them in pretty tight. So you may need a little more leverage. Just need a good ratchet. It should come out, come out fine. Here's another one, another 12. If you don't have a 12, you might be able to use like a half inch standard this is a half inch. Yeah, would work too. They're similar. And not much chance of getting zapped when we're doing this part of it. And once you remove that orange safety plug, there's very little chance. But when you start digging into the battery, you could get hit a little bit. So there's a lot of precautions you can you can go through but this will be very safe there's another 12 millimeter down here and then there's another one uh, behind this ducting we have to remove that and you'll notice that um, these are a little bit different. These are 12s, but one is shorter than the other. So we'll go over on the reassembly which one which one to use. I'm going to take out this one. And then we're going to do a little bit of disassembly to get some of this stuff out of the way so we can get to the other the other bolt. Battery weighs about 70 pounds, so you may need a little help to get it out. Once you get the screws out, you lift up this end lift it up about four inches and you swing it out and then you can lift this end out but you start on this end and you lift up this one too lift it out and you can get it out so this car is having this battery trouble at about 164,000 miles pretty typical it's outside of the uh, warranty and if you replace it with a good battery, good traction battery, some of these Priuses are getting up around, you know, 300,000 miles and they're still going. So it may be worth doing. There's uh, companies also that you can get a... Uh, Greentech.com, you can get a battery that is uh, brand new cells, not from the dealership, but they're it's a little bit older uh, ECU, a little bit older fan assembly, but it's the fan assembly, the ECU, and brand new cells, 
and for the generation three it's like around 20 2400 good company to deal with very very professional we're going to take this part out so we remove the 10 millimeter screw down in here pull that out i'm going to slip it out from underneath here and yeah, I think that was the only other points where it was hooked up, right there. Now that we have that out, we can have a little bit better access to this fan cowling. We want to get this out of here, because that will allow us to get to that other bolt. But to get the cowling out, we have to pull this plastic pin out. So you can put a standard head screwdriver in there and just kind of pry it apart. We're going to see if we can disconnect this little plastic plug by prying it apart. Yeah, there we go. And then we can get this cowling. It brings air from the um, fan, or I'm sorry, it brings uh, in, air from the outside in through the fan to cool the battery. And then we can see the bolt we're trying to get to down here. So let's see if we can get this a little bit more out of the way. We can get to that bolt. And now we can get this cowling out of the way too. We're gonna just pry up on this little pin there we go. It's the same kind of pin. It just comes right out. Lift this cowling out. That exposes a 10 millimeter. Keep these uh, pins in position to help us on reassembly. So we need to get to that bolt now. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that uh, 12 millimeter now. Got access to it. Some people recommend doing all the disassembly of this area too to get to this, but you can just remove this cowling, and if you have an extension, you can get to that 12 millimeter. Speeds it up a little bit. Once we get that one out, we've disconnected all the points where the battery's frame is connected to the frame of the car. We just have to do a little more disconnections and then we can pull the battery out. So you could probably do this whole thing 20 to 30 minutes. Might want to give yourself 45 minutes to an hour the first time just to be more acquainted. Some of these, some of these are a little tricky to get out. Part of this because their clips are holding it in various places. That's the bat, the positive side of the battery. All right. So we can reach in there and get that bolt out. Here we go. Got it. Okay, that one's out. Good. We're going to next remove this and some of these 10 millimeters. This one, this one, this, uh, this one. Oops, sorry. Yeah. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one to get this cowling off. So to get these two safety plugs off, we'll just do this one for right now. You actually use this part as a tool. And arrow's going to tell you what's going on. It's just go counterclockwise. So you go in here. It's going to lock in at a certain point right there. You driver, help me. Turn it. There we go. Comes out. So it's tens. There's a ten. There we go. Zip those off.
Okay, Is this cowling. This one off. And now we can remove these two 10, 10 millimeters. These are bringing power from the battery to the electric motor. These are high, high voltage, but um, we already removed that big, that big breaker, so there's, there should be no voltage in here. Push down that tab, pull back for that sensor. Push down on this tab, push down your thumb, pull back. This one, I think you push in on this tab. There we go. I just had to push in further. Get that one out. Got it. Okay, that one out, take that one out. Okay, we're gonna lift this off now. I'm gonna put those screws back though so I don't lose them, put them back on their post. So when we get the new battery pack from Toyota, it will not have this fan, so we have to take this off. Will not have these modules, we have to take this off. Will not have this ECU, electric, electric uh, control unit. It's gonna have this, and it'll have this. We'll have these cables. We gotta disconnect these, these little guys. That pushing it on a little tab and then lifting these out. Um, yeah, we'll have this. So I think we are disconnected now. We got the fan loose, got this all loose, took out our, took these off. We took out our 12 millimeters. We're now going to lift this side up and out to get the battery out of the car. I'm going to get in on the back seat to try to lift this up. So I disconnected this um, rubber hose from here. That's that's to take any bad gases from the battery away from the battery. I disconnect that, and I'm going to lift up. And so we lifted it up and pushed it out that way. And try to get it out that way a little bit more now. We're going to come from this end. Lift up more. It's starting to come out. Alright. Let's take your time. Clear. Oh, that cable was still hooked up. This was still hooked up there. That's what it was snagged. Should be good now. Yeah. I'm gonna pull it out there again. Lifting it up over the edge. Just take your time. Lighting it out. <clears throat> I 
one out. Okay, we got the whole battery. So I'm gonna lift it up. I'll bring it over to my workbench. All right. So we're gonna do a little disconnecting of this stuff to get ready for uh, bringing it to the dealership because they want this core, but I gotta get these parts off. So I'm gonna take this off and this off for when I bring this to the dealership <coughs> to do the core exchange. I'm just going to take a picture of where the bolts go to help me on reassembly. This just speeds it up, I think, less uh, trial and error <coughs> when you put it back together. This should be pretty easy. It's 10 millimeter. Let's take off the fan. Because they give you, they're really just giving you the battery. They're not going to give you the modules or the electric uh, electronic control unit or the fan. So we got to take that off. It's also a good time um, to clean the fan, make sure there's no debris in it. So when you reinstall it with your new battery, it's going to run better. A lot of these batteries end up having trouble. Uh, basically due to overheating. So there's a whole row of them here, cells. These tend to be fine, these tend to be fine, but in the middle there's less ventilation and uh, heat builds up quite a bit. <clears throat> so that's usually the ones that end up failing and causing the, the codes to pop up. That's all the ones for the uh, fan, I think. Let's see if it'll come up yet. Yeah, it's on a post there. Slide it out of there. Oh, there's a little <coughs> thing holding the um, fan's wiring down. Pop that up, huh? out. Cool. This little guy comes out. Having your standard head screwdriver with you to help you pry all this stuff off. There we go. So it fans up and what I'll do with those uh, fasteners is I'll put them back kind of where they were on the fan help me remember there we go <coughs> so the fan looks okay a little dirty in there <coughs> so I think I'll spray it in there with some electrical cleaner to try to get the fan motor contacts nice and clean that's the fan <coughs> so this whole bank should be able to come out Looks like there's a little modular connector still left here and there. Get those out. So we're going to press in on the tab and then lift up. That one came out. Press down on this tab and pop that one out. That one's out. This is like a couple of, um, might be eights, eight millimeters. I think those are eights. Let's see if it's a ten or an eight. I'm sorry, tens. Those are tens. Looks like you only need a a twelve and a ten to do all this. Pretty cool. <coughs> Comes out. Okay. Yep. One over here, I think. up 
yeah, this will come out now. These are all the these are all the relays and modules. So the the electronic control unit or ECU. It has a couple of connectors. Push in on this tab. That one out. Take a picture of this just for fun. Also a little tab here we can push in on, get this one out. This is bringing, I think, temperature data, or um, con uh, continuity data to the uh, computer. There you go. Get that one out. It's this one. Okay, and then <coughs> looks like a couple more tens right here. Comes out. See that bolt. Ten over there. This again is on the Generation 3 battery, the 2010 Prius. Take the ECU out. We're going to keep these bolts with it to help us remember. So we just took this sensor out also by pushing in on this tab and on this tab, and then you could pull it out. So I've just got the core now I'm going to take to the dealership. It's just really the battery and, and some cables in the frame. Took off the, mod, the relays, the ECU, the fan, and I think this sensor has to come off. It's right there. So we're going to just take this one now over to our Yukon. So we can bring it over to the dealership. Don't hurt your back, take your time. It's about 70 pounds. This in the car. And I'll bring some tools with me too in case we need a little bit more disassembly tomorrow at the dealership. But I think, I think this is what they want. So we're all set for tomorrow. We've got a hand truck, got the core battery, bring a wrench, screwdriver if we need it. But that should do the trick. I went to the dealer, picked up the new battery, brought it home, and added the uh, parts on the fan, the modules, the ECU, installed it and it's doing great. I've got about 3,000 miles on it and it charges up, discharges correctly, doesn't throw any codes and right here is a uh, indication of how the battery cells are doing so that's that's what it should look like. That's nice and healthy and this solved the problem. So thanks so much for watching and good luck with your car. I'm sure a new battery will do the trick. Thanks again and please subscribe.